Hi, and welcome to Mr. Seagull's Geography Adventures. And today, we're going to Peru. We're going to South America. Can you see? So, uh, my younger brother, Tommy, went to South America last year, and I've got a football shirt. So, welcome to all the different channels joining. So, hello on YouTube. We've got, hello, Millie and Izzy. Hello, Karina. Um, I've got people on Facebook. Hello, Mayuri. And who else do we have? I was going to try and switch down my sound uh, on Facebook and then Instagram. I can't see your comments at the moment, but I know you exist. But thank you for joining me uh, on Instagram as well. So let me tell you about my schedule. So it's June. Can you believe it? We've already reached June. So let's have a look at what June is going to bring us. Fern mania was so ingrained in Victoria and Britain no, that the that fern video. motif kept on repeating. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's for later. So let me tell you my weekly schedule. So, you know, if, if you want to know what Mr. Seagull's timetable is. So we've got uh, every Tuesday at 10.45, Maths with Bobby, and it's really fun, really exciting lessons. No, I mean, there'll be some calculations, but you'll learn so much about the beautiful subject. Uh, then on Tuesdays, we have geography, as we have today. Uh, then Wednesdays at 8 o'clock, for those who like a bit of football, a bit of football, Mr. Seagull, We're going to look at alpacas and someone, I think Mrs. O on Facebook gave me a great joke. I'll pack in my suitcase. We're going to look at alpacas and we're going to look at llamas and we're going to see if we can spot the difference between the two. Then obviously, Mr. Seagull's class, we also have a dance. So we're going to look at a traditional Peruvian dance and I've got, I've got my outfit ready for it. It's all ready over there. And then we're going to do some counting. We're going to be counting in a native language in Peru. And then finally, we have our standard. I set you some homework. Uh, then there's a quiz. So make sure that you are paying attention in the lesson. And then finally, thoughts of Mr. Seagull. Positive ideas to help you, um, I guess, approach life in a constructive way. So before we head off, we're gonna we're gonna head off to Peru in a second. We're gonna head off to Peru in a second. Homework. So every week, I, every class, I set a homework. I'm glad people can hear you. Sometimes I think the sound goes off. Um, I'm sorry about that. This is technology for you. Um, but thank you for bearing with me. You didn't miss anything amazing. So the homework. So last Thursday, we had a class on Iceland. On Iceland. And then we had Francesca doing an Icelandic clap dance. Uh, then Karina, an amazing outfit of, um, of the Vikings. Really wonderful outfit. And Millie and Izzy, thank you so much for submitting some homework. They submitted a poster for me. And then Oscar also submitted a wonderful diagram of um, Odin. So people are saying they, they missed my maths lesson on Monday. So from the coming Monday onwards at 10.45, my maths lessons will always be back on. So again, if you follow me on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, or Twitter, you will, you will not miss any bit of information. So everyone can hear me now. You can hear me now. Okay. So... Before we head off to South America, we're going to head off very shortly. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to, hold on, hold on. We're going to, we're going to get on a journey. We're going to go on a journey towards South America. So, get your thinking caps on. Get your thinking. So, Peru is, if you look at the globe here, we're here in Britain. I'm here in London. 
It takes us about 6,000 miles, 6,000 miles, where are we? 6,000 miles to the west coast of South America. So it's about 6,000 miles. That's a long distance. And if you're thinking, how long will it take me to get there? It's about, I would say, from London, about 13 hours. About 13 hours. About 13 hours. It's a bit, the board's a bit blurry, but 13 hours to get there. And actually, if you look at Peru, how big is Peru as a country? So the population of Peru, so Britain is, we're about 68 million. We're about 68 million. And Peru is 33 million. So we're actually double, we're double the population of Peru. But in terms of size of the country, Peru, if you look at it on the map, it's pretty large, isn't it? So the UK is about 240,000 square kilometers. So UK is about 240,000. 240,000 square kilometers. And you know what? Peru is more than five times larger. Can you believe that? Like people often, when we think of big countries, we don't really think of Peru, but Peru is five times larger. Five times larger. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, if you look at it, it's not, the population density is quite, it's quite loose, isn't it? It's quite small because we're double the population and yet it's five times bigger. It's five times bigger. So there we go. We're going to be heading off to Peru. And the key things that you need to be aware of before we, before we get on our flight, we're going to get on our flight, is that um, the capital is a place called Lima. And if you look on the west coast, there's something called the Andes Mountains. The Andes Mountains. And they are what Peru are often known for. So, are you ready? Are you ready for the journey? Come on, let's hop on board. Let's get on the flight. Um, hand in your passport. Um, get the flight scanned through the bag. And off we go. 13 hours later. I'm not going to make you wait 13 hours. 13 hours later. So let's, let's land in Peru. Let's land in Peru. So let's have a look. Uh, we're now in Peru. I'm quite excited. So how do you feel about going to Peru? Here we are. Here we are. Um, we're here in Peru. There we are. So in Peru, it's quite famous and renowned for the Inca culture, the Inca. And they used to be a small tribe in the Andes, a small tribe. But then they consolidated and they formed a society under one ruler, under one ruler. And you know what? This one ruler was called the Inca. The Inca, and that's how we have the name, the Incas. So that one ruler was called the Inca. And we actually may do a full history lesson on the Incas later, but this is just an introduction to them. And the Inca, they worshipped him as the child of the sun god. So he had an important place in their society. And their capital city was in a place called, if I get the spelling correctly, I think it's called Cusco. So they would be having their capital at a place called Cusco. So the modern day capital is somewhere called Lima. But back then it was called Cusco. And if you're thinking, Mr. Seagull, but when were the Incas? When were they? So they are for about 300, 400 years, from so about 1200 till the very last Inca emperor, 1572. So they were there for quite a while, and I guess the, the screen's not perfect, yeah. But they were there for quite a while. So, the Inca. We've seen where they are. We've seen that um, it's actually the name of the emperor, the, the Inca. But the place that I think, as modern society, we can still look at is a place called Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. And in their native language called Quecha, Quecha, which is actually the second most common language to this day, it means old peak or mountain. Old peak or mountain. And if you look, can you see the bottom picture? This site, high up in the Andes, has 150 buildings, different buildings, baths, houses, um, sanctuaries, temples, and it existed for hundreds of years, but it was only rediscovered by the West in 1911. 1911. So a man, so I'll put it down, in 1911 it was rediscovered. So a man called Hiram Bingham, so his name is Hiram Bingham. He was a professor at Yale University. So do you know Indiana Jones? Almost like that but a real-life version uh, of Indiana Jones. So he went there 
and we discovered it in 1911. And because of that, we have a greater understanding of um, the Incas and Machu Picchu. My younger brother, he went to Peru, he got the shirt and he visited Machu Picchu. Um, so I'm very jealous of him. But again, we can get to learn about the world from the safety of our room. So hello, Hina joining. And again, I think today I'm having a little bit of trouble reading comments on my Instagram on YouTube. Um, so I'm sorry about that, but um, I'll try and get that fixed for the next time. Okay. So. Here we go. We've seen a bit about their culture. We've seen about Machu Picchu. And now I want to show you something a bit crazy, a bit crazy. You're going to like this. So we're going to look at these little creatures here called llamas and alpacas. And I'm going to tell you about them. Before that, a quick video, a quick video of the llamas and alpacas. Okay, so that was a quick little video showing you about llamas and alpacas. And I'll tell you what, so when people think of Peru, often they think of the llamas and alpacas. But actually, do you know the national animal of Peru, on their flag as well, on their coat of arms, is something called a vicuna. Vicuna. V-I-C-U-N-A. Let me spell that for you. It's called a vicuna. And this is one that, to be honest, I didn't know much about myself. But vicunas... They're almost like little deer, really slender deer. But the key ones that we want to know about are alpacas and llamas. And they're all related to the camels, all related to camels. And the key, I think the key difficult thing is, can you tell the difference between llamas and alpacas? And so this is going to be Mr. Seagull's guide. Hold on, I'm going to get, my, I'm going to get some glasses on. Mr. Seagull's guide to telling the difference between llamas and alpacas because they look quite similar, they look quite similar. Okay, so the first one is, if you're out there in Peru, if you look at um, Machu Picchu, there are lots of llamas. So can you see there's a little creature on the Machu Picchu? So that is a llama, so llamas are there. So alpacas are a bit shorter, they're a bit shorter. And alpacas have, like in the bottom picture, have tend to have straight ears, straight pointy ears. With llamas, will have longer curved ears, a bit like a banana, a bit like a banana. And obviously the llamas, they're a bit bigger, they're a bit bigger uh, than the alpacas. If you see a, a taller creature, that's probably going to be a llama. But also, if you look at the coat of a alpaca, it's more uniform, more the same colour. Whereas a llama is a bit more mixed. So can you see that? The alpaca down there, the white ones, it's more the same colour. Whereas a llama, it's a bit more mixed and patchy. But which animal do you think is cuter? Do you think a, a llama's cuter or do you think an alpaca's cuter? What do you think is cuter? Well actually, I mean, you can, you can pick either, but most people, they think alpacas are cuter because they've got more face on their hair. Um, so generally people regard alpacas as cuter. So remember they're related to the camels. And if you think about it, you know camels, the ones with the humps. So they've originally come from that family called the camelids the camelids, but um, in Peru, the llamas and alpacas are what the country is quite renowned for. People say they love them, they love llamas and alpacas. Um, I personally, what do I prefer? I think the alpacas are cuter, but the llamas, they do a good job too. So I'm not going to offend any llamas. You never want to offend llamas, not a good idea, because I'll tell you why you don't want to offend llamas. You know what happens to llamas if you offend them? They spit. So they spit out. So that's one thing, if, you, if you're with a llama and an alpaca, the llama's taller, the alpaca's smaller, the llama has um, curved ears, more curved ears, and they'll spit, then it's definitely a llama, okay? There we go. So, it's time for our folk dance. So every session, if you're new to this, every class, I'll try and do a dance from that particular culture. Because again, we can understand the facts and figures about the population, the density, the capital, a bit about the geography, um, a bit about their history and their culture. But I think 
if you, you sort of get to know people, you want to see how they relax, how they enjoy themselves. So in Peru, there are lots of dancers. But the one we're going to look at is something called a, a marinera, marinera. And the marinera is actually a courtship dance. So when people are trying to date each other, they'll have a dance. So it's a very traditional one. Uh, and it's a combination of Spanish dance and Andean dance. Andes is from the mountains. So they combined it together uh, to make this. So again, as it's dance time, I'm going to see if I can try and get the YouTube comments up. And Instagram people, I know you're there, so thank you so much. Uh, but I can't see the Instagram comments right now. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get the YouTube comments up. Um, because there are a few of you on my YouTube. And I can see all of you on Instagram uh, uh, or on Facebook. Hello, Dari, and hello, Sarah. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm going to get ready. So I'm going to uh, get the outfit ready. So what do they wear? They have a white shirt. If you can see, the gentlemen wear a white shirt. Alison James, let's have a look. And Freddie, what do you reckon? So I'm going to get a white shirt on. And then they put on, if you look, if you look at that image there, they have a... Um, a waistcoat, and to be honest, I love my waistcoats. I love my waistcoats. Um, hello, Freddie McGill. Um, hello, Deb Jani. Uh, hello, Alison James again. So go waistcoat, can you see? I'm getting ready. I, I, I'm in business, you know. When I do my dance, I'm, I'm, I'm serious about the dance. I'm serious about it. Okay, so what else does he have? He has, there you go, a little towel. Don't tell anyone, this is actually just a tea cloth that I borrowed from my dad. So if my dad's watching, sorry, I'm using this. So I've got a tea cloth here. I've got a tea cloth here. A tea cloth, wait, I'll put that in, where, where can I put that? I'll put the tea cloth here. Uh, can you see it if I put it in my pocket? Okay, so you can see it's there, tea cloth. And then finally, I've got the hat. I am ready for some marinara dance. Are you ready for some marinara dance? So let's have a look at what they did first. Let's have a look. So I'm going to bring this forward. Sometimes the camera doesn't like me. Here we go. It's a bit glitchy. It's a bit glitchy, but let's have a look. Can you see that? So the whole my dance. So if you're the girl, you can do the girl's bit. It's a bit glitchy, but bear with me. Let's have a, have, a, have a watch. So this would have been a traditional courtship dance. So if you're trying to, you know, nowadays people might use online dating. But back in Peruvian traditional culture, they would do this dance. And if I did this dance really well, there might be someone who says, Can I marry you, Bobby? Can I marry you? So this is the traditional marinera dance. So the combination of Spanish dance. I know, Sarah, Sarah say, I look the part for the dance. I'm very proud to look. I've even got the red, we've even got the red thing here. Oh. I'm definitely getting the Peruvian women. They're going to be like, that Bobby Seagull, he's taken effort to learn the Peruvian dance. So we'll come back to the dance again at the end. But again, I think the dance helps us to understand a bit about their culture. Oh, there we go, there we go. There we go. Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish up there. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. There we go. Um, we'll come back to the dance at the end. So that is the Peruvian. I'll keep this outfit on for now. Should I keep it on for now? Should I keep it on? Actually, I'll go back to the... I'll put it back on for the very end. I'll put it back on for the very end. It's, it's a different dance, isn't it? It's a different dance. And I think with dances, they give us an insight into their culture because with them with the uh, Peruvians, it mixes the Spanish and the Andean. So Spanish people obviously came from the about the 1500s to South America and there's a native Andean culture as well. So both of them together form that. So let me get my, um, can we get my jacket back on? Let me be a bit, a bit more focused. We've got, to get, we've got to get through some more content. We've got to do some learning. Okay, so here we are. Here we are. So we're going to be in school. So, we're going to learn to do some counting. So we're not doing Spanish, because Spanish is what normally you'd expect people. And in fact, most people in Peru, and you know Peru is the third largest country in South America by area. So you've got the biggest one is Brazil. I've done another video on that before. Then I think it's Argentina. Yeah, uh, and then finally, it is, um, Sp uh, it is Peru. Peru is the third largest country. Okay, so they're, they're counting in terms of their numbers, we have three languages. So the main one is Castellana. 
So it's called Castellano, Castellano, Spanish. And 87%, so nearly 7 in 8 people, speak that language. Then finally, we have two other languages. One is called Ariel, it's only about percent to two. But the one we're going to learn is called Quecha, Quecha. And we're going to do the counting. And I'm sorry if it's a bit glitchy today. Technology is maybe it's a Tuesday, it doesn't want to work for me. So let's do some counting. So one is hook, hook. Say that for me. Hook, hook. Number two is iske, iske, iske. Number three is kinsa, kinsa. Three is kinsa. Four is tawa, tawa. And five is pisca, pisca. Pisca. So Lisa Jane saying she can count in Spanish. Uno, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Um, yeah, but we're doing, we're doing quecha today. We're doing quecha. We're doing quecha. Okay, let's do it again. So it goes hook, isque, quince, tawa, pisca. Let's count down now. Pisca, tawa, quince, isque, hack. Okay. I'm going to give you some maths questions. So what is hak plus hak? Iske, good. How about um, iske times iske? What's that? What's iske times iske? Tawa, isn't it? Okay, how about iske plus kinsa? Iske plus kinsa. What's that? Pisca. Pisca. So, I think you know the basics of counting in Quecha. Quecha, which is the second most popular language in Peru. In Peru. So we're approaching time for some homework. Let me see if I can see some uh, YouTube comments I can see. Instagram, I don't think I can see your comments. Uh, but I will, if you send me on Instagram a DM, I'll respond to you later on Instagram. So thank you for uh, being there. Um, okay. Let's have a look. So the homework is, I've actually changed my mind in the first homework. So what I often do is a do, draw or dance. So the do this week, I said you can create your own Peruvian traditional outfit. But actually... Can you maybe draw for me the difference, do something that shows the difference between alpacas and llamas? There's one game I'd love to do is, you know how people do spot the difference? I want to put pictures up of a llama and alpaca and you have to tell me which one's which. I think that'd be very cool, wouldn't it? That'd be very cool. Can you tell the difference, llama or alpaca? Okay, well the second one is, people often draw three things, at least three things you learned today. And Millie and Izzy did that for the last session. Or well, finally, like Francesca's done, or Karina, send in a video or photo of your dance. You know, when we get ready for the dance. Again, you can send it to me on Twitter, at Bobby underscore Seagull. On Instagram, the same. Um, you can message me as a DM on Instagram. Or my Facebook, you can directly message me there. So lots of options, and I'd love sharing your homework. Okay, time for your quiz. Are you ready for a quiz? Have you been paying attention? Have you been paying attention? Okay. So here are your three questions. Here are your three questions. Okay, are you ready? I love quizzing, I love quizzing. So what does Machu Picchu mean? What does Machu Picchu mean? That's question number one. Question number two. What's the second most common language in Peru? after Castellano Spanish. What is the second most common after Castellano Spanish? And the third one is, which are bigger, alpacas or llamas? Alpacas or llamas? Just a quick correction, Millie is saying she did her homework on days of the week. Thank you, Millie, as well. <laughs> okay, your three questions. So, Number one, anyone, anyone shout out? Instagram, you can DM me. You can DM me. So what, are, what is, um, what does Machu Picchu mean? What does Machu Picchu mean? What does Machu Picchu mean? Machu Picchu, remember? It means, well done, Mayurian, uh, Oscar, you got it? It means old peak or mountain. So old peak or mountain. 
And Machu Picchu, remember, was discovered in 1911 by Hiram Bingham. Rediscovered. It was always there. Okay, question two was, what's the second most common language in Peru? And I got some good answers from Catherine, got some good answers from Millie and uh, Lisa. And the answer is... Quecha, Quecha, and that's what we learned the counting. Well done, Oscar. It means Quecha. And the third one we ask, what? Which are bigger, alpacas or llamas? Alpacas or llamas? Or what do you reckon? So Millie, Catherine, snazzy quizzes. What's your option? What's your option? Um, Oscar, what do you reckon it is? Mayuri, got some options here. Freddy, what do you reckon it is? Alpacas or llamas? It is llamas, and you don't want to annoy a llama. You know why? This alpacas are cuter, but if you say that to a llama's face, they're going to spit at you. You don't want to annoy a llama. And the llamas are the ones that live around Machu Picchu. There are a few of them there. There you go. Well done. I'm quite proud. You did well on the homework today. Well done. And Instagram people, I will get back. If you DM me, I'll respond to you there. So I can't see my Instagram right now. Okay. So, um, what I tend to do is, every session, again, as a teacher, I love doing this. I do something called Thoughts of Mr. Seagull. And if you've been here before, you know I do this a lot. So this is where I take a, a few moments to reflect on ideas that can help us uh, be more positive about the world. So can you see those two glasses there? Those two glasses. They look the same, don't they? They look the same. A glass with maybe about 100, 200 milliliters of water. Yeah? But actually, it depends on your perspective. It depends on your perspective. Because some people will look at the glass, like this one here, and say, this glass is, oh, it's half empty, look, it's empty at the top. Another person will look at it and go, oh, Bobby, that glass is half full. And what I'm to say, this is about reflects your attitude. And I know in the real world, we can't be positive all the time. There's some things that make us feel down and upset, and of course, it's going to be challenging. But I would say generally, people that look at a glass and go, oh, that's half full, they've got a positive attitude. But I think positivity breeds positivity. If you're positive, other people bounce off that. And again, you can tell I'm a very smiley teacher. And of course, like a normal person, there are times where I'm disappointed or I'm upset. But on the whole, I try and stay very positive. And that half full positively spreads to people. So my students or people in my house or my friends. Positivity breeds positivity. So try and look at the glass. What kind of person are you? If you're someone that goes, oh, that's half empty, try and make days where you're a half full kind of person. Because the more positive you are, I think it's a virtual cycle. You feel more positive. Other people around you feel positive. You radiate positivity. So there you go. Try and find the half full glasses. There we go. Hello, the Roberts. The Roberts are here. The Roberts are here. Um, so I wanted to show you, uh, we've just had the third and final episode of my TV series. So again, I, I, what about, if I can find the book here. So um, I was on University Challenge, of, University Challenge a few years ago, and one of my friends called Eric Monkman, the BBC gave us a TV series. In fact, they gave us two. We had one TV series called The Genius Guide to Britain, where we went around um, England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. This series two that's just been on TV is three episodes looking at inventions, discoveries and history in Britain from 1750 to 1900. And last night at nine o'clock was episode number three. And if you missed it, they're all on iPlayer. So go to BBC iPlayer, have a look and you'll find it there. And I want to show you a clip uh, from last night. Have a look, a clip from last night. If I can find it, I think, have I got it here? Here we go. Fern mania was so ingrained in Victorian Britain that the fern motif kept on repeating throughout culture. So we saw it in pottery, in textiles, in wallpaper, and even the humble custard cream biscuit. If you look at it, it's got a um, Baroque style swirl, which is a embossed fern pattern. Mm. Mm. So I'll tell you about that scene. So if you missed any of the Monkman and Seagull, or you've not seen it yet, um, please do go along to iPlayer and it will be there for the next few weeks. And I'll tell you what, that was one of my favourite scenes. Because we all love custard creams in Britain, we, and throughout the world, we love custard creams. So much so that in Doctor Who, I'm a big Doctor Who fan, the Doctor Who has, the current one, has a custard uh, dispensing machine in her TARDIS. 
but if you look at a custard cream, the pattern on it is a fern. You know the green ferns in parks and gardens? So in the Victorian era, they loved uh, ferns. They were obsessed by it. So you know One Direction and Pokemon, and people love One Direction and Pokemon, and Little Mix. Imagine that combined and multiply it by 10. That's how much people love ferns. They had ferns on their gravestones, on their baptisms, on their wallpaper, on their clothes. Ferns are everywhere. But if you look at a custard cream biscuit, you can see the ferns. Still to this day, the obsession about ferns. So there we go. Um, again, it's on iPlay if you want to see it. So, what's my timetable? So again, on Mondays, uh, 10.45, Maths and Bobby. On Tuesdays, we have Geography. Then Wednesday is a football quiz. I like my football. I like my football. And Thursday is history. And this week, so again, if you missed any of my classes, they're all on my YouTube and my Facebook page. Um, and I think last week's class on history has temporarily eluded me. We did the Vikings. And this Thursday, we're looking at Florence Nightingale, a really inspirational person in the medical field. And then on Saturdays, I got my family quiz at 8 o'clock. And they're really fun. Can you imagine me doing a quiz? I'm nice. I'm very nice. Okay. Um, I think that's it. So make sure if you've got any homework, send it on Instagram as a DM. So Instagram people, if you mess with me afterwards, let me know you came to the class. I'll respond back because I couldn't quite catch the Instagrams. And thank you on YouTube and Facebook. Um, and again, if you want to follow me on my Facebook page or like, subscribe on my YouTube, it means I can get more of you in my classes. So I think we've um, come to the end of the class. You know what that means? It's time for a dance. We always do our dance at the end. So I'm going to get my outfit again. So it's called the Marinera, remember? Uh, the Marinera dance uh, reflects both Spanish culture and the Andeans. Remember the Andes is the mountains on the west side. Uh, Freddy, I hope Fre it's Freddy's first class today. I hope he's enjoyed the lesson. I'm going to do the dance. I'm going to get my outfit. So the white shirt. So this was used as a sort of courtship dance. So again, nowadays when people would message each other online back then, I guess uh, when Peru was being first... Uh, developed as a civilization or a country, they had this dance. So actually in Peru, uh, they celebrated their independence in 1821, July the 28th, so 1821. So next year is going to be a massive celebration for Peru, 200 years of independence from Spain. So I got my hat on, got my hat on, I'm going to start dancing. So um, I'm going to put this in, hold this. So I had an amazing class. So thank you, Deb Jani. Thank you, um, uh, snazzy quizzes. Thank you, Karina. Thank you, Mayuri. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you all for joining. If I missed your name, um, I will, I'll get back to you. Maybe your Insta or Twitter. Share your pictures of you enjoying the class. So let's get ready for the final dance. The final dance. A courtship dance. There we go. Let's have a look. Thank you so much. Spread the word. Tell your friends and tell your family that Mr. Seagull is here to teach you. Not just on TV, but to you on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. There we go. So let's have a look at the dance. Oh yes, do, 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 do. and hold the red thing. Maybe you send me a video of your dance. I know. Oh look, oh look at him go! I'll do one more time. I love, I love this dance. Dance just like you're so positive because I'm not a great dancer, but it's about your attitude. Can you be positive about it? So thank you all so much. I've had a, I've had a brilliant time. I'll do one more round of this. One more. Oh yes. Oh, this is my favorite bit. It's like saying, "Look, I'm here. I'm here. I'm ready to dance. I'm ready to dance." There we go. Thank you so much. I'm Bobby Seagull. So please stay in touch. I'm back tomorrow at 8 o'clock for a football quiz. We're back on Thursday for our next class. See you all very soon. Ta-da. Bye-bye.